Good to have you on board. All Thank right, you. so we'll get things going. Uh, how have you been since we, we've stopped uh, playing? Uh, it's been crazy actually because everyone's trying to to adapt to to the new reality. Yeah, it's a bit challenging, you know, like for for us as a coach, is we have to find new ways to keep sending information to our players mm -hmm. uh, for Pasco Bay or for my my other teams. And like it's just weird. It feels weird because we cannot do things face to face. Yeah. Uh, uh, but at least we know that soon <laughs> we should be back to him. That's what we hope. And how important is that to do the face-to-face -face, uh, the sort of contact or the training aspect of it uh, when you're coaching, say, from younger kids to the senior players? How important is that? Uh, the, uh, I think that that's everything that we do, everything that we do, like during the week, everything that we do over the weekend. Uh, it means a lot to us, you know, like in, in training sessions and in, in game time, they, they, they're really, really important to, to, to what we want to achieve. You know, like when, when we go to the training sessions, we, we're not just thinking about the training sessions. We're thinking about what we're going to do. about being face to face is, is the main part. Yeah. And how, what sort of uh, things have you started to do differently now since it's sort of happened? Uh, how have you found your adjusted, your training uh, style? Uh, at the moment with Pascoville, we kind of keep sharing information, trying to keep the boys fit. And with my elder clubs, I don't have the opportunity to, to talk to them all the time. Mm -hmm. but some of I can still do a few one-on-one -on -one training sessions because we are allowed to do personal training sessions and which is good. Like I can, can at least see most of them mm -hmm. and see that they keep fit, they can keep work on the technical stuff. And I think that's what we can do and that yeah. helps. And have you noticed uh, players reacting? Have they been uh, sort of a lot more do you feel they're training a lot better now that it's one-on-one? -on -one? They sort of feel like you get a more valuable time with yourself or do you feel it's, it's not, nothing much has changed, do you think? Uh, it really depends on player to player. Like I've got that I've been coaching them one-on-one -on -one for over two and a half years, like mm. every single week. That's good. when you go out on the pitch you want to give 100% doesn't matter what it is yeah. so like the, the ones that not used to it now they really oh that, that's massive for for yeah. me and, and my my best oh, that's awesome so tell us uh, how did you get involved in futsal was that uh, were you introduced by somebody or did you how did you start off so my story is a bit I think it's pretty much like all the, the Brazilians that, that I know, <laughs> like we grew up in, in this environment. Uh, I have an older brother yeah. and I have uh, my, my dad, he's crazy for, for football as well and, and futsal. So we start playing, usually we start playing at school and we play, I used to play with my friends, my cousins, mm -hmm. like streets and, and everything. Yeah. And, and, but when it started getting more serious, it's through school. Yeah. And then we are going to play for, for clubs. Like, I, I pretty much started playing when I was maybe six, five to six years old. Mm -hmm. And proper training sessions, and we started learning a little bit of the game. Uh, and back in Brazil, we, 
we don't usually go straight into Eldon. Yeah. Usually starts at futsal because it's just easier. And and yeah, so pretty much since then that's what I what I do every single day of my life. <laughs> You mentioned there that uh, a lot of South Americans have their futsal is very core part of their game. They start off with it and then they move to outdoor. How important do you feel that Australia is not doing the same thing? You there, mate? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I just um, got a bit of a slow internet. So in South, a lot of South American countries have futsal as a starting point, and then once they get to a certain age, they move to uh, outdoor. How important do you think that is that Australia has that same model? Uh, look, uh, it's hard to compare because we have different cultures, and that's the main thing. Like, yeah. Uh, here, we, we, we do, in Melbourne at least, we do have an opportunity to play outdoor since we are five years old. Back in Brazil, I could never play outdoor in a good environment with a coach or something like that or for a good academy when I was six, five years old. I couldn't do that. Yeah. I think here there is a, you know, there is a, a big potential for, for improvement on, on how that process works because if you can get kids playing like futsal and outdoor when they are young like futsal they develop different skills yeah when going to soccer they also do develop different skills and when you get to a cert to a certain age where you cannot decide what you're going to do like maybe when you get to 15 years old mm -hmm what actually happened to me do i go outdoor do i go Him? Yeah, yeah, it was just, yeah. Is this, just do you want me to switch the direction is yours or my, my internet here? I don't uh, know. I think it's, it's a, a bit of both, but that's, that's okay. Look, we can edit that out. That's fine. Um, we, recently, in the, uh, I was reading that uh, Ronaldo, the original Ronaldo and the best Ronaldo, has started uh, to introduce <laughs> futsal into Real Valvoid. How important do you think that is for a say a big club like well it's not a massive club but it's it's important step for them to you know from the beginning to get those players playing and then when they get to that certain age gap like you mentioned how important do you think that's going to be to his club and also potentially other clubs following suit we know barcelona has the la Masa academy um mm -hmm. and every other team has that how important do you think that is for um you know ronaldo to do that uh Look, I, I, I have a, a view of this, like, I still think futsal and soccer, they, they're two different sports, you know, even though they play both, but they're still different. Yeah. Like, it doesn't mean that the player that, that is massive, that futsal is going to be a, a very good player outdoor or, or the other way around. It yeah. doesn't mean it. Yeah. Uh, I, but I also find really important for, for the big clubs to invest on, on futsal because that, that's how you, you gather more, more people. That's how you see more, more talent coming up. So, and I, like Ronaldo, he started playing for Cruzeiro and Cruzeiro doesn't have any background in, in futsal. Mm. But if you go to the club which is rival to Cruzeiro, which is Atlético Mineiro, they have a massive impact on futsal back in the days. Yeah, like yeah. Falcão used to play for them, Manuel Tobias, which one of the the best players ever to play this game, play for them as well. So it's really difficult to say because it also changes uh, every single year. You know, like, it's difficult because 
Unfortunately, in food, so we don't have the same sort of investment that we have in Aldo. Yeah. And, but if, of course, if the big clubs could invest on that more and more through the years, we 100% would see better players coming out from a futsal environment to an outdoor environment, 100%. And did you ever play uh, outdoor or futsal in Australia? So my, my story here in Australia is a bit funny. Uh, I arrived here in 2015 uh, in September. Uh, there was a bit of off season for, for outdoor. And I came because I, I knew Breno since we were, Breno Polacci, yeah. since we were 10, 12 years old. We used to play together at school. And, but I stopped playing. I stopped playing when I was 19 because then I had to decide or, or I go for coaching, which was one of my passions, or I'm going to try to, to play. But I, I never thought I was good enough to make it to the, the professional level so when I got to the under 20s I, I stopped and when I came here I came because I want to coach so I wanted you to help Pascal mm -hmm. and bringing something different to, to the boys when I spoke to Andre before I spoke to Marissa before I spoke to Brent Mm -hmm. So uh, I was okay try to play for a little bit because I was still <laughs> fit. I could just try to adapt the league and play. Yeah. And I did. So I played for a few, I think uh, there, a... there are people downstairs, maybe they use the internet. <laughs> so getting back to start over. I uh, know that's okay. We can uh, just start off where we left. So uh you mentioned that coaching was your passion. Um <laughs> how have you found uh being a coach, how um, you know, are you still looking at uh, ways of in, are you have you studied something or have you tried to introduce a new style of, of your own way of coaching? How have you gone about it? Look, uh, now I've been coaching for nearly twelve years. My my first coaching job was when I was eighteen. <laughs> wow. And because you, you you play your whole life, and then you thought, ah, maybe I, I know how to do this. Mm. When when the opportunity comes up, and you're like, ah, I'm, I got this, and actually you don't, you know. Like, yeah. I think is a the never stop learning, you know, kind of thing. You, yeah. I learn every single day. Uh, coming to Australia as, a, as an example is totally different environment that I was used to. Mm -hmm. uh, even we say, ah, oh, back in Brazil, okay, we had amazing players and that, but coming here is very difficult. First, because of the language. Mm -hmm. Second, because the way people think the game, mm -hmm. is different kind of routine. So you always have to adapt. I, I'm lucky to, to have uh, people that, that taught me a lot through the years. Mm -hmm. and some of them are still teaching me uh, I have an older brother as an example who who is a professional coach and always look up to him and, and always learn we, we still talk about every time that we call each other is not to ask uh, how is your day being uh, yeah. is, um, how is the, the coaching going like how is your team doing how is the training sessions they're doing at the moment, you know, this this kind of thing. And but it's really hard to just say that ah, that's my style and, and that's it. I I honestly I, I disagree with that because we, we change over time. Yeah. Doing now is totally different to what am I doing two years time. Yeah, obviously you're evolving as, as time goes and as, as you experience more kids and uh, adults and you know, you more go in different situations. What do you think is the hardest part about coaching for you? Uh, really de depends. It really depends on where where we coach because it, it changes so much. Like environment to environment is, is totally different, you know. Like sometimes you have a an amazing team, but the environment of the team is not that great and that yeah. makes it much win. I think the 
the toughest challenge for a coach is to be able to bring the group together towards only one goal yeah. because you have a, a group of, let's say, food. So usually you have 12, 15 maximum. When you go for outdoor group, you usually have 20 to 25. Mm. And imagine how hard it is to put everyone with the same mentality, with the same work ethic kind of thing. It's really hard to do it. Yeah. Um, and how do you prepare for your training sessions? Is uh, especially in particular with Pasco, is there anything that you sort of focus on? Is it what you you know didn't do well the game before, or areas you think uh, you know a certain player or, or the team can improve on? How do you prepare? Uh, we have, like uh, at Pasco Veo, I have my my role, which is I coach the team at the training sessions. And Paul Vidic, as a manager, he takes care of the game. I, I'm just there to advise him, yeah. whatever he wants to do. I'm there. We, we talk, we discuss, we, we, and we make a decision. Mm -hmm. uh, after training sessions, uh, my main role is to, to put the, the game style out there in the game plan. Yeah. Uh, what, what's a bonus for us is we, we got the footage of all the games that we played. Yeah. 10 years so if I'm doubt about something I can just look back and, and get prepared for it mm -hmm. and obviously we know all the players that we're going to be, be facing yeah uh, uh, I'm going to give you a, an example like ah we, we play I don't know more ah okay they got this this and that play so the training session is really easy to to identify they what they do well, what they don't do well, and yeah. just try to practice that a little bit. Yeah, and that usually works really fine during the games as well. Of course, we you always have to make a few adjustments, but it's really easy for us to watch the games, make a uh, a session plan, and try to get it clear for the players. And how much during a game will you be? Are you pointing things out to the players that they're doing wrong or not doing, you know, not the structure right there? How how much of an um, influence do you have on that during a game, do you think? Uh, as a coach, I think my job is not to get carried on, you know. I, I, can't, I can't lose my focus. Uh, yeah. Sometimes we, we, and because we're so passionate, it's, it's yeah. really easy. Hey, the coach is going crazy like, outside of the four lines there. <laughs> but it, it is, it happens to me, but I, I try to, to stay on my lane and I, and I try to, give, to, to read the game, pretty much read the game. And because it is a futsal game, it things happen so quickly. Yeah. So if you're not able to read that in the right moment, I'm not able to give the right advice to the players. Yeah. Yeah. But there is another thing I can give the advice, but the decision making always comes from the player. Always comes from the player. Now, uh, Green Gully, uh, you were coaching, I think, the under 16s or 15s, or was it, at one stage? Or if you still doing under, it? Under this year, under 16s. Yeah. And how, you know, how have you found that, you know, going from futsal to senior players, uh, a little bit mature, going to outdoor and, um, you know, players that you maybe at a very younger age, how have you found that for you? And also, you know, how do you adjust? Honestly, for me, nothing has changed because since I was 18, I've been coaching seniors level and, and also juniors. So honestly, it wasn't a, a surprise for me. I, I deal with that pretty normal, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it, it's good because it is a, a good club that there is a very good culture in the club and a good environment and we see that we're very serious about what we do mm -hmm. and our focus is is the, the player development which sometimes things get confused in, in that in that age group yeah, because yeah. things 18 some of them are aiming for for the seniors level but still there's still players that need development and i find that really <laughs> not easy, mm -hmm. but we're comfortable to work with that sort of players, mainly with the ones that want to go even higher in their in their football 
football life. Yeah. When you're looking to sign a player, um, whether it be uh, inputs or outdoor, what do you, what type of player do you look for in particular? The type of the player that they might need, always, always, because there is one thing that is really important: is the culture of the club. Every club is different. Every club is different. Like I, I can't try to make Oveo play the way that my team back in Brazil played and won 10 titles. I, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, the players are totally different. The culture behind is totally different. The game style is totally different. So my, my answer for that, we always look for the player who will switch that situation better. And um, who's the easiest to coach at Pascaval, do you think? Who do you think you just have to tell them once and not do it? Who, who's that player? Mm, that, that's a tough one. That's a tough <laughs> one. Actually, we're pretty good with that. Uh, of course, we, we're always going to have disagreements between the players, yeah. between, the, between coaches and coaches. It's normal. That's part of the, the sport that we play. Yeah. Uh, I find easy to talk with, to, to the young guys, to the young guys, they, they're pretty easy to, to deal with. I think Jake, who has been with us, I think for over a year, nearly two years now, and Hamish that just came, mm. it's really easy to work with these guys. Uh, the old guys, like João, Andre, those guys, they, they, <laughs> you know, like they... Sometimes the information they have to give is not just an advice, it's just like uh, trying to encourage them to do more things. Because when they do wrong things, they already know it. Yeah. They already know it. They tell them, oh, you're doing this wrong. Like they, they can feel it. They've been in the game long enough to, to understand when they make mistakes. Uh, I, I guess the, the young guys are. are the young guys. And I guess the older guys that are a bit more annoying, they uh, sort of know it all and, you know. Don't tell me what to do is type sometimes, not all the time, I guess. This is part of part of this game. It's part of this game. <laughs> but honestly, we don't have problems at all with that. Do you have any uh, superstitions before a game? Do you like to do something um, before any game? Honestly, I never, never thought about it. <laughs> I think the only thing that I'm focusing before the game is how I'm going to end this game. Yeah. You no, know, I, I, I try to get motivated. I try to get aware of what's happening around and see who is playing the other side and see the last adjustment that I have to make. But superstition, I've never been yeah. this. You don't wear that singlet's not a superstitious one. I always see you in a singlet. I just think, uh, is that maybe no, it's a lucky one? Just when I show off my monada, no, <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> no superstitions. <laughs> so Pascal has lost uh, a. Quite a number of big name players: uh, Lucas Vaz, uh, Felipe Blay, Alejandro recently, uh, Alison De Lima, Maurizio Novak, Aaron. You unfortunately to injury. Uh, how do you manage that as a, as one as a coach and try to keep doing what you you're trying to achieve? And that's obviously win. Um, you know how do, how do you manage that from a you know a coach's perspective? So. Uh Going back when I was 18 years old, like when I was there, I, I wouldn't know what to do. But once we, we start coaching, you understand that that's part of it. You, players will get injured. Uh, some players might leave. Some players might come. Some players might not perform the way you were expecting. You just have to, that's why you need the group. And that's why you can't have five players in it to have for for the league that we play weeks in and out we need to have at least 12 players ready to play yeah uh, and, and not just to play but able to perform as well uh, i i think what, what we can do the best is to keep the players motivated mm -hmm. they haven't been playing to know the opportunity will come and when it does you gotta be ready for it, and yeah? and it is a a daily thing to work on. Yeah. On the focus, on, on the mentality, on the preparation. You don't know how long you're gonna be on the court for. 
you don't know. Like you might be there for for two minutes, you might be there for twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. You might for one minute and you play well and, and then you you earn more 20 minutes yeah yeah um, but it is what it is and like we, we say that's what we say we me and andre we we always talk about this so if players leave and they leave and we're just gonna adjust and gonna keep going just yeah. gonna keep of course it's hard to see when the friends leave or when aaron who was having an amazing season with us. You get injury at that moment, you're like the the best moment of the season, and he gets like that. And it is pretty heartbreaking, but it's yeah. part of it. You've been uh, very close over the last couple of seasons. Um, obviously, last season, um, you know, on the final game, um, we weren't able to obviously clinch a win. What do you think's missing from Pascal to just get you over that line? Do you think is it a certain player? Um, do you think it's you guys being more consistent across the season? What do you think it is? Uh, good that you mentioned that because we at the start of the the last season when we were having our meetings and we were like, okay, what's our goal for the next eight months? And we said we have to win one title mm -hmm. and we have to get to the grand finals. We did it. We yeah. did actually. We achieved our goals. Uh, but we know that, that we could have won, if not all the titles, but we could have won most of them. And, and when, it, when you see that happening over and over again, you're losing the last minute, you're losing in the last second of the match. Losing because you could have scored and you didn't score and you conceded the goal in the counter attack. Yeah. Those things happening. I think the only thing that we could say is a bit, a lack of maybe maturity. Okay. And, and a bit of concentration as well because when you, you, your focus is on the play and also it brings your confidence. Mm. Uh, if you're confident enough to, to do your job, in those which are the, the the most important moments of a match, which is the, the end of the match, you just have to finish your job. Yeah, uh, it's something that we have to work on because it, it's not it's not normal. You you losing games in you know in the last minute, in the the last ball of the match. It's not normal. Just something that we have to work on. Yeah, you you mentioned um, you know. Uh, two close games, the obviously serious futsal and um, SFA going down to the you know the last you know minute or so. What do you learn from those games that you tell your players going forward? What can you teach? What can you say to them or teach them or you know explain to them that you know hey look, you know if we ever get in this situation, this is what we need to do. Is there something that you've mentioned to them after those games or anything like that? Uh we we all, actually we always do say that the game starts when the the ref blows the whistle and we're gonna play into the last second yeah because everything can change in in, in one second so we we gotta be prepared for it uh, it's just like difficult to deal with what might happen even though like you're super prepared you, you prepare you prepare for the fifth main situation you prepare you prepare for if you if you get a player sent off, we are prepared for that. But at the moment in, in the game, when you don't have that time to actually sit back and and analyze what's happening. I mean, as a player, as a coach, I can still do that. But yes. as a player, it's really difficult for them. Uh, I guess what, what I always say to them, like we have to play from from the first to the last second. Yeah. And what we have to learn from what happened before is to to take our chances because if you look in all of these games and you mentioned those games but the one that hurts the most i think is the game two years ago when we play sfa in adelaide and we lost the same like we lost in the last the last few seconds yeah yeah to, right i think that game maybe hurt the most because we we playing so well we had such a, an amazing competition and because like a little bit, a little bit of concentration in the, the most important plays, we we considered some goals that, that we shouldn't have. 
Yeah. Do you feel that your players from the other players? Do you feel that your players uh, will be better from those experiences? Because a lot of players don't get a chance. Like you mentioned, your goals were to be in finals and win a trophy, and you've done that consistently over the last couple of years. Um, do you think? You, do you feel those players? Um, you know, they sort of uh, grow a lot more from those experiences and understand what's required of them. And like you mentioned concentration levels. It has to be over the from start to finish. Yeah, some of them do, definitely. Some of them do. Uh, the ones that are resilient enough to, to understand that, you're going to copy. Yeah. Like, how many games have we won in the last second? Yeah, that's right, yeah. We lost in, in the last second. So it's up to us to, to learn from, from those moments. I think some mistakes that we, we made the last the last months like let's say in the last six months i don't think they would happen over again yeah because you know how much it hurts and we know that we need to take that on board and say that's our responsibility nobody else and we need to to learn and grow from that and yeah i'm, I'm pretty confident that all of our players uh i can i'm very aware of you know we when we got the chance we we're not going to give it away yeah, I'll go uh, an easy question this time. Uh, what's uh, e uh, harder, coaching the boys or keeping uh, Paul Vidic calm? Uh, that's a hard one. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> that's a hard one. Actually. No, I think our boys, it really depends because we, we feel like when we, when we get our environment, the training session environment in the, the pre-game environment, like, we, we had a good warm-up. Like, we, we know they're going to have a good game. Even when things don't go well, at they start, but we know, guys, we, we, we got this, we can come back. Keeping Paul Vidic calm will never happen. <laughs> <laughs> He's so passionate about this game. Yeah. Uh, uh, really, we need to give that to him because he is someone that loves what he does. And he loved the boys. And Pasco Veio is the, the club that it is one of the most important in Australia. Is mainly because of guys like him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's as much as we, we can laugh at it, we can see the passion. And, you know, that's why we love the game. It's, it's people like that who really care. And it's, you know, it's there's no malice behind it. He just loves it. And, you know, you can see that and as, as well as yourself and a few of the other boys, uh, the coaches. Um, you won the club's cup. Was that a big relief for you guys? No, it's not a relief. I think it's part of our job. We we know that we got everything that we needed to win that game. I think we played two days after we losing the SFV. Is yeah, that yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We kind of guys. We we just need to to switch off and switch on again. What's in the past we can change, but we can change what, what's in front of us. Yeah, yeah. as a team. We, we've been preparing ourselves for so long and we, we know that we, we got enough to win this title and, and we did, I think. It's something that we just, we had to do it. We had to do it. I don't take that as a relief. Yeah. Uh, which team do you find hard to match up with? Is there a particular team that really gives you guys uh, a lot of trouble? Ah, there are a few teams that, that give us a lot of trouble. Uh, but I would say Carlton. Carlton is the, the toughest one for, for one reason. If you don't play, if you don't match up the Carlton intensity, you lose the game. Doesn't matter how well you play. Doesn't matter if you go better players than them. But if your intensity is not the same or above their level, you're going to lose them. And I've learned in the last the last few years. Uh, it's, it's a good answer because it leads to the next question. Uh, just before the season ended, you guys played against Carlton, and um, at one point they were looking like a very big win. You managed to pull it off. Was that just a bad game for you guys, or were you underprepared, or you, like you said, you didn't match their intensity? Just because of that, like, and, and we had that conversation before the game. And also after the game, we say like, every time that we play against Scouting, we know that all, all we, we have to have that level of intensity and concentration, we know that we're going to concede goals. 
because they are a team that can score goals like this. Yeah. And you know, once you come back right away, you're going to concede one, two, three, four, and then forget it. You already lost the game. Yeah. And honestly, we, we knew that. We knew that. It's just something that we, we didn't nail before the game. So it's our responsibility. And uh, who are some of the players currently in your youth ranks that, you know, are ones to watch out for? Because uh, Pascal is, is a great as a club from, you know, juniors all the way up to the senior men's. Who's a youth player there that we probably haven't heard of or seen too much that's one going to be to look out for in the future? Well, look, uh, I, I honestly think the, the boy that just came from New Zealand, Hamish, he's going to be... A very good player in the next few years. And of course, it takes time to adjust, but we can see that he's got a lot of potential. Uh, I think Adam, Adam, Ayek, what is his name? Yeah. Uh, we can tell that he's going to be a top player in the next few years. We can tell that. And there, there are a few surprises coming, but I'm not going to tell you now. There are a few, a few surprises for the next maybe two, three years, but I'm not going to say people are going to try to, to take them from us. <laughs> Hopefully we can uh, see him. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, Hamish there. You brought in Leo Kimpara, uh, Fab Jr. and Hamish. I know it's only been a, 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 you know, a few games for them, but how have you found them fitting into Pascaval's culture and system? Uh, also, we brought players that we knew that would fit in the system that we, that we want to play. Uh, we know the the Fabio is a very strong player and a very intense player. And sometimes when as he lost Alisson, and we know that we need a player that is just intense as, as Alisson to, to win balls, to to put pressure up at the top. And I think he is doing really well with us so far. Yeah. I, I'm 100% sure he's going to be able to score more goals, to be even more important for the team that he is right now. Uh, Leo, Leo, again, we always wanted to have Leo with us because he's a futsal player. <laughs> like he can he understands the game of, of futsal. He's been in the league long enough to understand how the game is played as well. Because it's not just being a futsal player, but having to understand how serious, fut serious futsal work. Yep. Uh, and, and I think uh, same as, as Fabio, like takes a, a little bit to adjust to understand how the system is, to understand how how we want to progress through the season and another player that is going to be fine. And, and Hamish like, is a surprise for everyone because nobody knew of him beforehand. But we always like wanted to, to bring him even before. And now that he's here, so we know that one, two years, he's going to be pretty much in the same level as Tyler, Scotty pretty much like that yeah uh, this question came in portuguese so i had to google translate it um i'm not sure if the translate was correct so why are you so fussy is it about what <laughs> I don't know. it just came through in portuguese so i had to uh do google translate and that's what it said i'm not sure if that's a correct translation, but um, that's what it came Say the word in Portuguese. Say the word in Portuguese. Uh, um, look, my Portuguese is not good. Of, uh, that's fine. My English is not, not that good either. <laughs> I think I still have it in uh, Google searches, but um, when I, if I find that, I'll, uh, I'll get it to you. Um, another question that came through was, uh, if you could pick 12 serious futsal players from any team and create a super team, who will, who uh, who would they be? And what do you think you would achieve with that team? Um, achieve? What we could achieve first, I'm going to start from the last question. What we could achieve, I think, with a proper setup, like training sessions, uh, more than three or four per week, 100%. And I think we, we, we should be able to, to play overseas. I mean, play in Asia, and have a good experience there. And also, I really believe that we would be able to face some of the good teams from it, 100%. But the 12 players, really hard to pick, huh? Pretty hard. Is that, baby, when, if you had an open open checkbook and you could sign whoever you want? All right, don't need to start. <laughs> now, let's start from, from the keepers. Uh, at the moment, for me, the, the best goalkeeper 
and it's been for the last maybe three, four years, it is Aaron. Yep. Yeah. So I'm not going to count Felipe there because Felipe is not playing the league at the moment. Maybe Tamburino, who started with us and went really happy to see a player like him that was very shy at the start. Like we, we didn't even know what to expect from him. And after like three, four years, being able to play the level that he's been playing is just amazing. Uh, I the back there got a few, a few good ones. Like I would say, of course, Andre. Uh, just because of the experience that that he brings is it, super important. Like he's a very regular player. And also Cooper. Cooper for me is is something that every single team wants. Yeah. Like a player that can pass, a player that can can shoot from everywhere. He can find uh, little tiny pockets and and set up a play. Is a, an amazing player. Uh, that is the other one that I like very much. I hate playing against him, but I like him very much. He, he's a tie. I think he's a Amazing player. Everything that he does is correct. Maybe a tie and I don't know. But we could say maybe Temo, I like Temo as well. Yeah. Love Temo. Uh, I left you Fuda, which is important. <laughs> uh, I would say who else? It's too many players to think about, huh? Mm, ah, of course we we love watching uh, is quite in cozy playing as well. So I think those boys, they super fast, they super quick on, on what they do. Mm. Uh, need to say anything about Fernando and João? <laughs> I don't think I need to say anything about those two because those two, if, if, that that is a, a joke between the king and. And the god of food. <laughs> so, yeah. And those guys are amazing. So how many have I got? I don't know. I think yeah, you're up to about seven. Seven. Uh, the moment we have the best target in the league, which is Lucas Vaz, who <laughs> like is just someone that can change a game because he's just so so composed in his actions and and also, his technique is, is something incredible. Uh, so that that's 10, 11, one more. Gonna, yeah. People are gonna kill me after I didn't say my name. Mm, one more. Who do I bring? I like lefty footers. Let me think about another lefty footer. I, I, I'm gonna give that to Pepe. Pepe, yeah. because from such pieces, he's someone that can decide games. Pretty big super lineup there. Um, if you could manage to get yeah. all them on one team, I'm pretty sure that uh, you could win the World Cup. Yeah. And, better and, than then the get, and then you could get Kevin, you could get Alejandro. Like, there are a thousand players that I could bring to my team, and I'm pretty confident that working with them week in and out, we could achieve a lot of things. Yeah. Um, uh, with, your, with AC Football Academy, uh, you went uh, in 2019 uh, to a Spain tour. Tell us a little bit, a bit better that. Uh, there was a great experience going there because we got to play against good clubs even though we knew how difficult there was going to be for our players to play against like some of the the biggest clubs in in, in Spain and but at the same time uh, we, we actually we didn't go there to to win games but we knew we we went there for the experience and we saw the our boys, of course, if we, if we compare the technical level from the NPL here in, in Melbourne mm -hmm. and the technical level that was played in, in Madrid or in Barcelona, we, we see a huge gap. Of course, we do see a huge gap. But in terms of work ethic, in terms of effort, like they they pretty much similar, and it was very good to see that we we are in the right path, pathway. We we just gotta keep doing it, keep 
say the, the, the good things, you yeah. know? Um, but seeing different style of coaching, uh, sharing different experiences with, with, the, with the other coaches as well, because the, their struggles are similar to our struggles. Mm -hmm. Like with uh, kids these days, they, they don't play football enough. They, mm -hmm. they spend time on in their video game. It's pretty much the same over there. You know, like, of course, uh, Real Madrid always gonna gonna have uh, good players in their academies. Of course, they can get the best of the best, but they they've been saying that okay, we, we still have the best players, but every year the level drops a little bit, mm -hmm. drops a little bit, just because maybe the passion is not there anymore, or maybe because no, just the culture is changing, the culture of the world is changing a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, I, I found that really, really important for for the kids and for the coaches here in Australia. They never had an experience to see how an environment for uh, under 15s is in a country like that, just like it is in Argentina, Italy, Brazil. Like it's pretty serious, you know. Like uh, 15 years old is pretty much a professional. Yeah. You know, trains every day. He has a routine every day. Everything that he does is to play the games in and to train the sport that he chose. Well, uh, I won't take up too much time. I know you've got a party to go to, so hopefully Maurizio has a, a fantastic birthday. Look, uh, obviously the governments have announced that we are going hopefully back to normal within the next month or so. So hopefully we can get back to serious food. So I want to say thank you for tonight. Um, it's a pleasure to talk to you and uh, pick your brain about coaching. Um, you know, I love watching uh, Pasco play and I love seeing your, your passion as well as Paul's. Uh, keep up the great work. Thank you so much for your time tonight, uh, Greg. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, man. Uh, I just hope we can can go back to, to the court as soon as we can because yeah. one is missing it. Yeah. Hard for us to be away from something that we've been doing for, for so long. Yeah. I'm pretty sure when we come back, we're going to come back even stronger. Hope so too. Thank you so much for your time tonight and uh, have a good night and enjoy. Thank you. Talk to Thank you later. You. Bye. Bye.